Hey guys, what's going on? Today's video is sponsored by The Food Saver and I'm super stoked because they have a product that I absolutely love and make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because we're going to be doing a giveaway. We're in 400 feet and today we're going to be doing some tile fishing. It's kind of a crappy day. It's actually raining right now. It's very overcast. But this is who I'm fishing with. I got my friend Christine here. Hey. Her boyfriend Alex there. And then Victor is behind the camera. So let's get to fishing. Now for bait we're going to be using squid and bonita. And we just caught those bonitas. So let me show you how we did that. Alright we got Alex and Christine both on with probably a bonita. This is what we need for bait. I got a tiny one. We go, we got our first bait. Pull them over. There you go. All right, so we just got those two bonitas, which we probably went through a school of them. That's why we got two on at the same time. I'm gonna put our lines back out, get a couple more, and this is what we're gonna be using as bait. We have some squid today, and then we also wanna use some bonitas. So we're loading up on bait now, and then we're gonna head to the tilefish grounds. <laughs> All right, we got another one on. Christine's on with her second bonita of the day. <laughs> So this is what we're using. We're, this is a black and red feather and the other one is just a white feather. Perfect little bait. We call these bullet bonitas. They're actually false abacores, but we call them bonitas. So now I'm going to just take off the two fillets off this bonita. This part we don't need. All right, so we got some bonita chunks. Now we're gonna cut up our squid. So we're gonna be using this chicken rig. We have two circle hooks and we have seven hooks. Now with the bonita, I'm hooking them through the skin side because that's the only part that's gonna stay tough. If you just hooked it through the meat, then it would pull off. But the skin of a bonita is very tough. We got 50 pound test, two circle hooks, and then a 24 ounce lead down at the bottom. So I'm gonna drop the lead in. And we're just gonna drop straight down to the bottom. We have a west wind today. So we're gonna be blowing offshore. So we're gonna be going deeper. Now we're probably in about 450 feet. My transducer on the bottom of my boat is actually not working. So I can't tell you exactly how deep I am which isn't the best thing for this, but we're around like 450 feet right now. We're gonna drop all the way down to the bottom and then we're just gonna wait for a bite. Ooh, you see that? Mm -hmm. I'm getting bites already, I just hit bottom. Now, as we drift, I'm going to constantly be letting line out because I want my weight to stay on bottom and I want those baits on bottom. Well, we got our first one on. Tip. We see it. All right. Well, once I got probably 30 feet off the bottom, I felt like the it, whatever I had on fell off, and it did. So we're gonna drop back down. We're gonna try this spot again. Oh yeah. Stay on this time, please. Oh no, we got a shark. Got a shark. All right. Well, we got one and a shark. Oh, did the shark come off or is he still there? I don't see a shark. shark. Came off. The shark came off? Yeah. You saw the shark. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe the shark came, came up and followed no. it up. No, he was on that bottom hook. Yeah, he was hooked. All right, guys, so we got the first fish. This is a blue line tile fish. They actually don't get very big. He's very cold. Deep water fish are really cold when you bring them up, but they're really pretty fish. All right, so this is what we're going after. Blue line tile fish. We got one in the boat. Let's drop back down. That looks like you got him. I got him. Yeah. There you go. Coming up. Christine, you're next. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I got one. You wanna bring him in? Oh, he's even sm oh, he's like the same size as the last one. There we go. Got another one. All on that bottom hook again. Yeah. They sit in the mud and they come up and eat it. They're pretty. Mm-hmm. Very pretty. They're barely hooked too. They got some small mouths. Yes, they do. That's why they're so hard to hook. They got these little baby mouths. Well, that's why they come off so easily too. They come off very easily, especially since you're reeling them in from 400 feet down. There's that much opportunity for them to come off. Here we go. All so right. Look at them in the sun. That's Here so we. pretty. Beautiful fish. And every single one has their stomach popping out. And a lot of people wonder why you keep a fish this small, but whenever you're deep dropping, you're not fishing to release things. You're fishing to put meat in the boat. You're basically grocery shopping offshore. All right, guys, we finally did it. We got two on at once. Yeah. Got some nice size ones right here. There we go. You heard it? <laughs> See, we need a couple more of those. Now we got two. two I know it felt heavier than the first time because that's because we had two. Nice one, oh, what is that sticking out of his Ooh, a little eel. Is it? Are you filming it? Yeah, that's not that's not our squid, is it? No. No. Looks like an eel. It does. That's a tough this mouth. came out What's of that, that tile fish's stomach. Yummy. This is what, number three and four? Yep. Put them in the cooler. <laughs> We're having sushi tonight, baby. Hey oh, right, Brick, what's going on? Alright guys, so I was dropping down and all of a sudden it starts vibrating. I don't know if you can see that. And I was like, oh yeah, baby, that's a tuna. I told them that sometimes. You're right. Yeah. I told him that sometimes on the way up you can catch a tuna, but maybe on the way down. I'm thinking it's a tuna. Look at it vibrate. I mean, you didn't hit bottom yet, did you? No, no. I'm like halfway down. It's got to be a little black fin. What is it? It's a oh, black It's a black fin! fin. <laughs> nice! Oh, good, baby. Hold it. Awesome. Get him in. Yeah! <laughs> That's cool. Now that is a pretty fish. Look at that golden blue. That is beautiful. Fish. He's lit up. You got him? You see how he's vibrating like that? That's, <laughs> that's, how, that's how I knew we had a tuna on the line because they do that tuna shake. This change right here is probably my favorite thing to see on a fish. I love the way they look and I love to look at them head on and you see their pec fins, how wide they are. Like little airplanes. Yeah, that's a beautiful fish right there. They really look cool. In a box. Pretty cool. <laughs> Go Brooke. All right, Vic finally took a turn. How many do you think you got, Vic? Uno, uno mas. This one? Uno. I dropped Nuts? the bag. Oh, huh? Alex is calling you. I don't think you have any. No, I got one. You have no faith? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, we got him. That's a nice one. Decent size. That's a record. That's no, a... he's tiny. Compared... So all we can get is that same size. Literally. Maybe we gotta go deeper. They're all the same size. Oh, here we go. Number five. Number five. Number Drop five. it back down. Man. These, this thing's freezing. All right, guys. So we switched it up. Tile fishing was kind of slow today. So we're now in shallower and about 200 feet of water. And we're dropping for some vermilion snappers. Now on the way down, I got eaten by something. Not sure what it is yet. Victor thinks it's a blue runner. We'll see. <laughs> Like, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a blue runner. Looks like blue Look runner. at that big blue runner. There we go. Nice blue runner. I want a chunk of squid. What you got, I got a king. I'm glad we weren't recording. We kind of happened really fast, didn't it? So there we go. On a vertical jig. On Brookie's combo. I stole her combo from her. Sorry, babe. You got yourself a kingfish. Good job. Thank you. Well, Vic, what you got? I hope I got a vermilion. That's what we've been trying to get the last few drifts, but can't seem to get much luck. We've been getting a lot of bites, but it's all just small stuff and we're having a hard time hooking anything. Oh, it's a porgy. Got a porgy. That's good. That right there is some of the best meat in this ocean. 
very white. So these guys got to be 12 inches and he's like right on the line. So we're going to let him go, but check these guys out. When you first catch them, they got all these blues on them. Real pretty. All right guys, so we are back at the dock and this is our catch for today. We got a kingfish, five tilefish, the one black fin, and then these are the bonitas that we didn't use for bait. Now tonight for dinner, I'm gonna be cooking up this kingfish as well as the black fin. Now with tilefish, I'm going to fillet them up and I'm gonna vacuum seal them as well as the bonitas. I'm also going to fillet them, keep the slabs whole and freeze them so we can use them for bait another day. So now I'm going to flay these guys up and then I will meet you in the kitchen so we can cook up the kingfish and the black fin and then we'll get to vacuum sealing the rest. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Since we had a long day out on the boat, I'm going to do a simple dinner tonight, which is my go-to recipe for both kingfish and tuna. First thing I'm starting with is beer battered kingfish. I'm going to use three quarters of a cup of flour, one egg that I'm going to scramble up, and then a couple seasonings. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. Then of course, beer. Beer choice is completely up to you. Tonight I'm using Budweiser and let me tell you it was a great choice. The amount of beer varies. You wanna make sure you have a perfect consistency, not too thin, but also not too thick. I added a little more beer, then I had to go back and add some more flour to get the right thickness. My advice would be to just add the beer slowly until you get it perfect. Now for the tuna, I'm using my favorite blackening seasoning, just coating the fish with a nice layer. All right, so we have our beer batter here, and it's basically the consistency of like pancake batter. Not too thin, not too thick. Make sure you guys get the right consistency. And we're going to take our kingfish and dip them into the beer batter. Now, all of my pieces are basically around the same size because you want them to cook at the same time. And now I'm going to put them in the oil. Got our oil nice and hot. So they're getting nice and golden brown and now I'm gonna flip them over. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Beautiful. So we are going to take these bad boys out. They are nice and golden brown. All right, so I got a little skillet with some melted butter and it's on medium high heat. And now I'm going to put in my black fin tuna. Now I cut it into these small pieces because I have eight people here. So everyone's going to get a piece because I have eight pieces. Results of part of today's fishing. Okay, everyone, it's ready. Now, I get a lot of questions asking what we do with all the fish that we catch. Now, we either eat it the first or like the second day, sometimes the third day, but if we're not going to eat it within those first three days, then we always freeze our fish. Now the best way to freeze your fish is to vacuum seal it. It makes it last so much longer when you vacuum seal it and it's just a clean process. Now you might think that it would take a lot of time but it's actually really easy and it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> now what I use is the Game Saver Outdoorsman vacuum sealing system and I'm gonna show you guys how I vacuum seal my fish. The Outdoorsman comes with pre-cut bags which is like this or it comes with a roll 
and you can decide how big that you want to make it. Now let's say you had big fillets, you can make them bigger, however, whatever size that you wanna use, you can just cut it and make your own bags with this. Now the first thing that I like to do before I vacuum seal my fish is to dry it off. Another thing is we never wash our fillets off before we freeze them. So basically I'm just getting off the moisture that might have accumulated while you were filleting it. I didn't rinse them off first. But I like to have my fillets nice and dry and I also like to lay them out like this so I know what size bag that I need. Now I'm going to actually show you guys how to make your own size bag with this. Lay it across, figure out how big that I want it. And you want a little bit of excess on the sides so that you can make a nice seal. So I'm gonna cut it about this big. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn this to open. Open it up, put in our bag, close it, push it to operate. And then all we're doing now is just sealing. Now this is going to make one side sealed so that we can fill up our bag. Now it does it automatically and open it back up. And there is our seal. So now we basically have our own bag and the size that we want it. Now another thing that I like to do is I like to label my bag so when it's in the freezer I know exactly what's in it. So we're going to write tilefish and the date. Now we're going to lay in our fillets. Now you don't want to just throw all your fillets in here. You want to make it easy so that when you when it comes time to defrost your fish, they're all laid out nice and thin. So when you go to defrost it, it doesn't take forever to defrost. It's nice and easy, and then that way it also lays nice and flat in your freezer. They'll be much happier if you take the time to actually lay them out now than when you go to defrost them. All right, there we go. That fit perfect. All right, and now for the fun part. Now we cut the bag almost perfectly sized. Lay this in here. Close it up. Turn it to operate. Now we're going to press the vac and seal button. That's going to automatically take the air out and then seal it once the air is out. You don't have to do anything. It's just gonna do it for you. Own once I got all the air out. All right, it's done. Let's open it up. There we go. A nice seal. All of the air's out. Now with the outdoorsman, you can seal 40 times in a row. Then after 40 times, you just need to let it have a break so that it can cool down to avoid overheating. And there we go, now we're ready for the freezer. I actually find this fun and I like knowing that it's going to keep my fish fresh five times longer. Now I also told you guys that we were going to seal up our bonita so that we can use it for bait later on. Now the way we have them flayed is perfect for strips. Now you use strips for planer fishing. Now a key point when doing bonita strips is salt. The salt dries out the moisture and keeps them nice and firm. So we're gonna add salt to these before we seal them and then freeze them. Now, we're not gonna use them like this. We still have to cut them into thin strips, but this is how we're going to freeze them. And then when we're ready to use them, we're gonna make some fresh strips out of them. I dried them off so they're nice and dry, and we're going to just lay it on like this, and this is how we're gonna freeze it. Now, this should fit perfectly in this bag here. Whenever Victor and I go on a trip, like we just went on a Keys trip and we posted a bunch of videos from that, I'm sure you guys have seen those, we always bring the vacuum sealer with us. It makes it easier so that when you're on a long trip, you can fillet your fish, vacuum seal them, get them in the freezer, bring them home frozen in the cooler, and it's just a lot less work once you get home. You wanna make sure that there's nothing on the edge that'll that'll complicate it when it's sealing. 
I had some salt on the edge there, so I just wanna make sure that I get that salt off. But not only are we preserving our fillets to eat them later, but also our bait, so that the bait lasts longer in your freezer. So I'm gonna put this in here. Close her up. And now, time to vacuum and seal. she's sealed open it up and there we go a nice clean seal and we got some perfect bonita ready to use for bait later on now all during the month of june the outdoorsman will be 17 percent off and i will have a link down below in the description if you guys are interested and you want to check them out then also i will be doing a giveaway on my instagram at Brookie Chris, where you guys can win one of these now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We had an awesome meal together, and then we also have some food to throw in the freezer for another day. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.